Yo, it's your boy Jay Boogie back with another video today on this marvelous Monday. <clears throat> Let's dive into for another video, another episode, and this one would be a game one recap of the Timberwolves versus Suns. And we saw that the Wolves did what I said they had to do protect home court and they got the W last a uh, few nights ago. And um first off for the Timberwolves, they obviously protected home court and didn't stop KD, but they did lock down D book, which is a great thing that they did in game one. Um that was making it tough on him. They kept making him overthink. Uh they kept uh they they pretty much overall as a team came out aggressively on defense. Not necessarily in the first quarter, but they kept that intensity, that energy up. And um, they was have a good rotation on defense, on, on screen, making the right switches on when to come up the screen, come off the screen, stuff like that. And um, I feel like Connor in the town looked great. He looked healthy, he looked comfortable. Um, it was a big contributor in this game. And then Anthony Edwards, you know, and him, bro, I said he needs to come off the gate, get in the game, and just start taking smart shots, but being aggressive, and do what he do. And he was straight cooking. Um, I think he had like 33 points. He was literally dropping dimes. Uh, not dropping dimes. He was dropping the – no, he actually was dropping dimes. Take that back. <laughs> but um, he was very efficient from the three-point line. Um he was taking, like I said, um, efficient shots, especially in the mid-range, because he kept showing Case his good footwork, especially when he gets to that mid-post at the free throw line. He was doing what he was doing, and, you know, that's what they need from him to get out this whole series. And if they want to advance to the playoffs, that's the kind of performance and type of energy they need from Anthony, uh, not Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards. They need that type of energy from him from, uh, throughout the whole series, big time. And Carl Anthony Towns, uh, who looked very great out there, um, you know, he was uh, being aggressive at the rim. He kept posting up KD. He wasn't forcing bad shots. He, he knew when to pick his moments to actually drive in aggressively. Um, he, was just being, he was just being very fluid. He was just being himself. He was very composed, which is great. And he was pretty much perfect on the free throw line. He was eight for eight. Um, you know, he was, and he was actually getting some good offensive rebounds. And he was the one that was making key downs. Even though he only had four assists, but them four assists, if you watch the game, it, 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 it was some good ones. It was some very, very good ones. And Rudy Gobert, man, they're going to need him to do that every game, damn near almost. And, and the whole playoffs, if they advance, because basically, he was aggressive on the boards. I think he had doubled up in this game. Um, he didn't. He didn't get a steal or a block, but he was still a presence in the paint on defense. But offensively for him, you know, he was making shots at the rim. He was being aggressive on the boards. Um, you know, and then I think I for for Minnesota, once once they get a lot of second chance points, it's right up their alley because you got two pretty much seven footers in the paint. So I feel like it's easy for them. And um and for the Suns, the Phoenix Suns, man. Dog. They started off so good in the first quarter or in the first half. I don't know what happened. Cause it's like they kept overthinking. They was throwing a lot of sloppy, lazy passes. It was just a lot of unbalanced possessions. Um it just, it was just like, for some reason, like, their, their mentality was, like, inconsistent. And and what, what made it worse, they only had one bench player to score in double figures. And that was Royce O'Neal. I think he had, like, 14 points. And um, and it was, it was it was crazy because I'm looking at the stat line, like, 14 points. He was the only one. It wasn't like I expected everyone to get double figures off the bench, but... Nobody else scored over like six points 
besides him. And they can't win games with only one bench player contributing positively on the court. And I feel like um, that took way too many threes because cause they a well-balanced scoring team because you got a guy that can finish at the rim, can shoot the mid-range, and shoot threes. But I feel like that was too reliant on the threes. But with the type of defense that Minnesota was giving them, you know, it, you know, it would it just it just forced them to take a lot of a lot of bad threes. And for um, for D book, um, I felt like he has let the game come to him in the series. Um, because Nikhil Walker, Alexander Walker, who was very good on him and make, making life tough for him on the court. Because Nikhil dropped 18 points and had like three, four steals. So he was playing great off the ball defense on Bradley Bill and Devin Booker. And um, but D Book, he just he kept letting the defense doing what they want him to do. So just let the game come to him, stop hesitating. Um, and you can't operate in the threes, operate your biggest strength, and that's coming off the dribble in the mid range or off the catch. Go at the rim, keep drawing fouls. You know, just be aggressive. Like, just do what you do. And I felt like he just, for whatever reason, was just hesitating. And he just kept being just like in the shell that he couldn't get out of. And they don't need that for him to do that anymore in this series. Um, and then for Kevin Durant, pretty much, we know he was efficient. You know, scoring off the dribble, scoring anywhere he wants to on the court. I mean, he was just, I mean, he's unguardable at times. He is unguardable. You just hope he misses, his, you know, misses shots. <laughs> so he was being KD. He was pretty much the most consistent rhythm player on the offense end. And then for Bradley Beal, um, he was he was pretty much the second best player on, on the court. Uh, knocking down key threes. Knocking down with certain shots. He was facilitating, getting teammates involved. And I feel like um, if he keep taking smart, efficient shots, I feel like the offense will flow a lot better. Especially knowing with him being the third option to score, he looked great out there uh, a few nights ago. And I feel like for game two for the Suns, um, they got a, they, the positives for them when they was running the pick and roll was they was getting scores. So what you want to do for the Suns is to make Gobert get out of the paint, make cars in the towns, and um, Gobert move a lot around on defense so where they're not in the paint, especially for Gobert. Um, Nurkic, it's a time to be tough. It's a time to be big, bro, because nine points and four rebounds ain't going to get it done because Gobert outplayed you big time. So I feel like for Nurkic, he has to play big because he's definitely important to the Suns as well. In terms of getting boards and attacking the rim and finishing at the rim. So he has to um, just play big because it's no excuse for that <laughs> at all. Um, and then for the team defense, for game two for the Suns, lock in. Even if you got to run zone, uh, a lot of double teams, a lot of switches, but they have to communicate because they, they, they look very lackadaisical and they kept – Giving Anthony Edwards space like he hasn't improved his shooting, which I don't understand why they did that. But I feel like the Suns they got to lock in. So, um, I and, and, and then another thing I feel like for the Suns it's just a matter of fact they just you got three or three three great scores on the team on one team, and I feel like their biggest strength to me is the mid range. So operate in mid range because that's where most of your Efficient scoring came from was really within the mid range. So, uh, I don't know who's gonna win game two, but I feel like for the Suns, it's more pressure on them. Timberwolves, for them, just keep playing their vibrant, intensity defense, and they're good. So, it's that's a wrap. You like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, do whatever it needs to do. Let keep this trend going, guys. I love you guys. Jay Boogie is out.